I'm Meredith Morakovitz alongside Jack Curry. Day three of spring training has come and gone. Jack, I'm going to put you on the spot a little bit. If you had to sum it up with one song title, what would it be? You are putting me on the spot. I usually try and opt for something from the reggae world, <laughs> but I'm actually going to go with Let It Be by the Beatles. And this is my reason for that, because one of the big themes that we've heard about here as the Yankees have reported to camp, so many questions about that Astro sign stealing scandal. And I think the Yankees are just saying, let it be. But I think let it be also applies, Meredith, because it's going to be a really good team. And we're seeing that develop. And I think if you're the Yankees, yes, you're out there trying to make sure this team is ready, all the talent is in place. But you just have to let this team be. This team is going to be really good. I'm going to piggyback off of that a little bit. I'm going to do a song title choice of my own here. Bring Along it on. the same lines, I'm going to go New York, New York. Yes, everyone almost in that clubhouse that spoke was asked about the Astro sign stealing. At the same time, while they answered those questions in their best way, what they believed their truth was, they all ended it with, Look, we cannot change the past. We need to focus on what we want to get done in 2020 as the New York Yankees. So I'll go New York, New York, but we'll keep it on that theme because Brian Cashman not too long ago spoke for almost 15 minutes to the media addressing that Astro scandal. Right, and this is the second time he's spoken about this. You and I interviewed him at Yankee Stadium. That was the first time he discussed the Astro sign stealing scandal. He repeated today some of the same things that he had told you and I. And the theme was, listen, am I upset? I'm absolutely upset. Our organization feels it was potentially deprived of something. But at a certain point, you do need to move forward. I underlined the phrase he used, unhealthy dynamic. He said it's an unhealthy dynamic if you're constantly reaching back into the past to complain about something. But Meredith, he offered some new nuggets, some, some new tidbits that we were unaware of. He said he asked Carlos Beltran yeah. about the rumors that the Astros were cheating because Beltran was employed by the Yankees last season. He said he has asked other folks with ties to the Astros organization who have come under the Yankees umbrella at some point. And he said no one ever gave confirmation. The Astros wanted to keep that scheme hidden. And it wasn't until Fires came out and said something that really led to this entire investigation. We are still waiting to see exactly what penalties there may be for the Red Sox who are still under investigation. But keeping it with Brian Cashman, I mean, he's tried to say, turn the page, turn the page. Obviously, people are still talking about it. New information is coming out every day. And I'll ask you, do you think it's more difficult? Yes. Well, a lot of those guys in that room were on the 2017 team that was so close, even last year. Oh, so close. Right. For guys that were affected, like the Luis Severino, I looked in the mirror every day and I was trying to figure out if I was tipping my pitches. Aaron Judge, second runner-up to the AL MVP, to Altuve. Is it harder for those guys to turn the page than perhaps others? I, I think it is, but I think you have to figure out a way to do it because we know how difficult this sport is to play. And if you're distracted and thinking about something that you can't control anymore, I absolutely think it can get in the way of your next mission. I, I thought Cashman was very candid. He admitted that, listen, we never get 2017 back. Yes, that absolutely impacted the games that they played against the Astros. But at a certain point, you, you do have to move forward and you have to try and beat the Astros this year. And you have to try and beat everyone that is in front of you. Much like Aaron Boone, Meredith, Cashman said that he wants to move forward from this. But I'll repeat what I've put on Twitter, what I think you and I have talked about. This is not going no, away. No, it's not. Just no, because not. a couple of people say, okay, I don't want to talk about it anymore. Every city the Astros go into for a road series, the reporters from that city are going to want to talk to them about it. The announcers who are announcing that game are going to bring it up. The Astros did this to themselves, and now they have to live with it. They sure did. And you mentioned distraction. One guy who had been mentioned a lot, perhaps, as a tradable guy this mm. offseason has been Jay Happ. He was asked whether or not he heard some of those rumblings, if it was a distraction, and how he prepared this offseason. And he's a guy that's a veteran. He said, no, I've been through this before. I expected that I would probably be here, but you can't change the way you prepare. So he had actually been over at Himes here at GMS starting in November getting ready for the season, throwing a little bit earlier than perhaps he would in years past. Right. I thought Jay Happ very honest and very cordial during his interview. I always do believe, though, as much of a veteran as someone is, when you hear your name in trade rumors, I think it has to cause a little bit of pause. But you're right. He's been through that before, so he understands. I took this away from him, too, Meredith. He said 
in terms of his pitching style for 2020. My strengths are my strengths. You reported on this last year, as did I. There were times where he was getting away from throwing his four-seam fastball. He wasn't locating it in a good spot. It was getting hit. Jay Happ has had a successful major league career because of that four-seam fastball, so I think that will be back in play this season. Also, interestingly enough, talked about some of the new technology that he's trying to take advantage of with new pitching coach Matt Blake and maybe some changes and developments he can make with his off-speed pitches. I don't know if you noticed, even just when they're throwing bullpens here early in the spring, the amount of equipment that's yes. set up out there just to monitor everything to make sure they have a good side-by-side -side comparison as they progress through spring training. Right, there are cameras set up, there's other technology and computers set up. Matt Blake, the new pitching coach, seems to move from mound to mound, kind of studying each pitcher for a few pitches, offering a couple of words of wisdom. Aaron Boone is right in the heart of all of it. And yes, during a 25 or 30 pitch bullpen session, maybe there is something about spinning one of your sliders or one of your curveballs, and they can go back and look at that footage and say, this is how you grip the ball there. This is where you released it. This is what you want to try and do during the season. A couple guys of note did throw bullpens today. Luis Severino, Garrett Cole again. You'll hear more on that from Jack Curry in just a little bit. And also Davey Garcia. Do you think we will see him in the big leagues at some point this season? I do, Meredith, but I think he still needs to get his feet wet at AAA. Mm -hmm. Brian Cashman, a few years back, when I was asking him about elevating or promoting a player, I can't even remember what player it was, but he said, listen, we want that guy to conquer a level before we bring him to the next level. Davey Garcia hasn't conquered AAA yet. I think he goes down there knowing that when the Yankees have a need in their starting rotation, he can absolutely be a factor. Aaron Boone spoke very highly of him today, and you could see the excitement in, in Boone's eyes and hear it in his voice about some of those Yankee pitchers. Clark Schmidt, Michael King, Davey Garcia, all those starters who are some pitchers we might see in 2020. Something to certainly keep an eye on throughout this spring training. Anything, you didn't bring your notebook. Anything else in the notebook? It's always here. It's always, it's never too far <laughs> you would away. You never leave home without it. Uh, I, I, I think, I, I've been watching Severino, mm -hmm. and I, I just keep thinking that Severino is, is going to have a, a terrific season. I just feel as is if he's... a confidence and a power yes. about him as he walks around, it, it, if that there, makes sense. There right? is, and, and I know anyone watching this might say, oh, well, what can you read into a guy's body language? I'm a big believer in body language, and I, I thought Severino's body language sagged when he struggled in the second half a couple of years ago. One more thing is watching Gary Sanchez catch Garrett Cole in a bullpen and just noticing mm -hmm. a little leaner this year. Boone yeah. spoke about that. And both you and I not giving away any secrets because hopefully we can do it as the spring evolves. Definitely want to talk to new catching coach Tanner Swanson and what he's working on with uh, Sanchez. Hopefully we'll be able to do that within the next couple of days for you. Are you mad at me, by the way? Am I mad at you? Yeah. Not I meant to I bring you of. flowers for Valentine's Day. I know it's a little unorthodox, <laughs> but I didn't have time when I drove here today. So happy Valentine's Day, Jack. Likewise, too. I'll, I'll <laughs> say happy Valentine's since we're on that subject to the love of my life, Pamela. Now she has to watch all the way to the end. 28 years of marriage next week. Well, 28 years. She couldn't wait the six minutes to hear <laughs> yes, it at the end. Yes. Right? Happy Valentine's Day, Pamela, and everyone else out there. We will see you again tomorrow.